let's see any other information on here oh made in China by awesome people can you see that Today we are going to install a new RV door lock on the door in our travel trailer. Let's go ahead and open this up, see if everything that says is in the box is actually included. So the first thing we have some uh, information from Latchet. Apparently this is uh, take a picture, send it to us and we will promote your picture. Awesome installation guide. That's pretty cool. Um, here is our hardware package. Oh, it's nice, a little, little keychain. It's always kind of cool. Okay, here is our screwdriver. I guess we just pop it off. Man, that's that's awfully small. I guess. Okay, so we got a little bit bigger attachment. We've got a flathead there, and I'm assuming this is going to be the Phillips. Oh, again, super super tiny, like a precision eyeglass one, but. That's a little bit bigger, and I hope that's big enough to do the job. I would assume so. What else do we have here? Uh, two sets of keys. So we got plenty of keys here, um, and those are pretty heavy duty too. Those are not, those are not cheap keys. That's kind of similar to what's on my truck. Huh, pretty solid there. Uh, yes, batteries are included. Here is the unit itself. Again, in, I mean, that's heavy. Wow. That is very heavy there. Man, I was, I'm surprised how heavy that was. I wasn't really prepared for that much weight. And then, let's see, what do we got here? Okay, here's our wireless key fobs. Let me open these up. Yeah. Yeah, pretty basic. All right. Got two of those. Here is our replacement membrane. And then here is our gasket. I guess that helps prevent getting moisture inside the unit. So, well, pretty, pretty cool. Um, looks like a nice little assortment of goodies. Why would somebody want to install one of these in their travel trailer or RV? Well, a lot of reasons. Number one, the main reason I bought it is because I'm just, I'm tired of pulling keys out of my pocket constantly. And I don't like carrying a lot of stuff in my pocket. So if it's one less key or if I don't have to carry my keys with me just for getting in and out of the trailer, that is one handy reason. Um, number two, what if you're packing up, you're ready to go and you, you're traveling with your kids and the kids say, mom, dad, I forgot my phone or I forgot my shoes or I forgot my um my snacks so it's easy to use the key fob from your tow vehicle just hit it open kids can run back grab something and you can lock it up with the key fob um number two what if you need to allow somebody else into your trailer you need to have some kind of access why would you do that well say if uh Say uh, um, you're out of town and somebody's watching your trailer for you or somebody can go over to your trailer. Um, they need to get in for some reason, uh, whether it may be, maybe the people that work at your our, the storage facility where you store your RV. Uh, maybe they need to get in for some reason, whatever that may be. Or think about this. Uh, most people who travel with dogs do leave their animals in the uh the, the uh, rv for limited short times uh, short periods of time while they go out uh go for a hike uh if, if say maybe dogs aren't allowed or they go out to eat or go get groceries or something uh it's not uncommon to leave your dogs in the trailer as long as you do it safely make sure they have plenty of food or water air ventilation and all that but uh say something happened uh to the uh, to the trailer and maybe you're one of your neighbors at the campsite you let them know you're you're gonna 
you're going to go out for a little bite to eat and, uh, you know, keep an eye on the trailer for them. If you have a good enough relationship with your neighbors, uh, you don't want to give them the code to your trailer, but you can give them your phone number. And if something happens or if the dogs are going nuts, uh, or if there's a fire or some dangerous situation, you can actually, uh, you know, text them. You can text them the keypad number and they can open it up and take care of that situation. Uh, far less likely to happen, but you never know. Um, I would say most importantly, I just, I'm just tired of using the keys all the time. I'm tired of having to carry them with me. Um, if I, when I park the trailer in front of my house and I, for, for doing some work, say I'm getting ready to go on a trip, I'm loading it up, I'm going in and out, in and out. I don't have to lock it every single time. Or if I do feel like, like I need to lock it, at least I don't have to grab my keys every single time. So very convenient there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this thing installed. We're going to go ahead and install it on the door of the trailer. And uh, then we're going to go afterwards and show how to program, program a new pin code as well as how to program the key fobs on the back. So stay with us. We're going to head outside and get that rolling right now. Okay, before we can install this, we need to take it apart. So we need to remove the four screws holding the inside panel okay, outside. Oops. And you know what, while I have it apart here, should I go ahead and install the batteries? Let's see. Should I wait till the end? You know, I guess I should read the instructions. Here we go. Alright, we've got our two sections. Looks like they actually are plugged in there, so we've got to unplug that. And now I have it here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the included batteries in. One little screw holding the battery cover in place. batteries go which is nice especially for somebody old and blind like myself let's grab these batteries here open these up don't look like the most high grade batteries on the planet but I think they will get the job done here okay so it looks like oh, they all all go the same direction It's weird. If you look at the inside, where the connections are, we have the spring on one hand and the other connector. There's a spring the connector. Normally, you would put the batteries separate ways, but this shows that all batteries go the same direction. Do I believe it? I don't know. Let's see. I'm gonna put them in the way I normally would, according to the way everything is connected here. back up and see if this thing turns on. Is that a good sign? Three beeps. Be very careful. I, I don't recommend doing what I'm doing here about holding these two together while they're not installed. It'd be really easy to damage the wire coming from there but uh, 
let's see if it's functional if we get the, the stock or the default code is one two three four so let's see if that works one two three four unlock one two three four lock there we go see the dead ball working one two three four unlock and you can see the backlit screen there as well one two three four lock works perfect okay i'm gonna very carefully unplug that and then we'll head outside and finish up the installation here we are with the old lock that we were replacing So, we can take the old lock off. There are four screws on the inside. We're going to use our handy dandy little screwdriver that came included with the set. Looks like it's a little bit tighter fit in there than I thought it would be. I need to clean out some of this extra foam insulation in between here. As you can see, we do 
have the manual functionality of the deadbolt there. Let's put some more screws back in. see much difference but I'm gonna go ahead and the included one on here thing programming is just a bit touchy what we need to do is hold down the 8 for two seconds and then hold the lock now see how it beeps like that that means it's not functioning properly well let me rephrase that that means you're holding the lock down too long of course it didn't say anything about that in the instructions I had to figure that out so hold the 8 for two seconds and then just tap the lock there we go now Put in the default code, one, two, three, four, lock. Now you are free to enter your own code. Let's go with eight, seven, six, five, lock. Hit it one more time. One, eight, seven, six, five, lock. There we go. Now that is our new code, it is locked. Let's put in the old code. One, two, three, four, unlock. Hey, it doesn't work. That's right, because it's functioning properly. Let's put in the new code. Eight, seven, six, five, unlock. And just unlock the door perfectly. All right, easy enough. Just remember the key is you gotta hit that eight and then just tap the lock. Don't hold down on the lock button. Otherwise, it will give you an error signal. Okay, so let's program the key fobs. As you can see, there are two buttons on each one. We've got green and black. Uh, each button has an, a lock and an unlock on it. And it appears that um, using black or green will allow you to choose key fob number one or key fob number two. So, first thing we gotta do is turn this switch on. Without this switch, on the key fob will not activate for, so for those of you who have no interest in using the key fob just leave that in the down and off position everybody else go ahead and turn that on we are going to hit the number one button so our little red light comes on as you can see we are going to push in this little pinhole hold that down and now, let's hit the unlock button. Or actually, let's hit, let's hit the lock button. Wow, that's pretty easy. Lock, unlock, lock, unlock. Okay, so I'm gonna go through that again because it was pretty simple. Hold down whichever key fob number you want this to be, the number one or number two. Hold down the top till the red light comes on, push the little pinhole right here, hold that down at the same time till it beeps and you're good to go. Simple enough. And 
there we go. So if this video provided any value for you as far as uh, some education on how to install the Latchet RV Lock, please like the video. And if you want to continue to follow our adventures, please subscribe. We appreciate it very much. Thanks and have a great day.